Jimmy Dykes had sidelined K line and Colavito for weak hitting, but has restored them to the lineup tonight. Jimmy's coming out now to home plate with the Tiger batting order. And Casey Stengel coming out of the Detroit, out of the Yankee uh, uh, dugout now with his batting order. And Casey's coming out on the run. An oddity in the schedule makes for this situation. This is the Yankees and Tigers' second consecutive get together at Briggs Stadium without an intervening appearance by the Tigers at Yankee Stadium. The Tigers appeared in New York earlier in the year for two games. I'm checking the schedule. Let's see when that was. May the 24th and 25th. And the Yankees won those two games, beating Larry and Mossy. But then when the Yankees came to Detroit in June, the uh, Tigers uh, beat the Yankees twice. One of the games was... Uh, Let's see, when was that? No, May the 24th and 25th when the Yankees were in uh, uh, Detroit. Detroit was in New York May 3rd and 4th. That's when it was. And the Tigers beat the Yankees twice here. With Larry and Mossy naturally pitching against New York. The Yankees will see Larry tonight. And Mossy too in the series with possibly Paul Point tag in one of the other two games. As we look to see the, the uh, happenings of the day in the American League, Baltimore, Chicago tonight will be Barber against Pierce. Cleveland leads Washington two to one, then of three and a half innings. Ramos and Grant, Dobeck homer for Washington and Keene for the Indians at one on. Boston and Kansas City. Uh, later on tonight. In the National League, Pittsburgh won, St. Louis nothing at the end of three innings. Law against Gibson. Los Angeles at Cincinnati, Berkey and Padres. A twilight doubleheader at Philadelphia. Chicago six, Phil six at the end of nine innings. Cardwell relieved by Elston in the sixth, and Owens is pitching for Philadelphia. Homers, Banks is 19th with one on and is 20th also in the same game. So he now has taken over the Major League lead held for quite a spell by Roger Maris. Walters has hit a pair for Philadelphia, one of the one on, and Herrera the one on. Right now, our national anthem. scoreboard at Milwaukee, San Francisco, and the Braves. The Braves lead by a score of 9-5 to five at the end of six innings. Brunette started for Milwaukee. Fiche came on in the sixth. McCormick started for San Francisco. Shipley and Odell and Lowe's all in the fifth inning. Both teams scored four runs in the fifth. Mays with two on and Cepeda homering for the Giants and for Milwaukee. Crandall, Aaron with one on, and Adcock with one on. That's the first game of Twinite doubleheader. 
Mike Larry getting set to work now against the Yankees in the first game of a three-game series. A night game tomorrow night, an afternoon game Thursday. Then the Yankees move on to Cleveland Friday night, Saturday afternoon to Sunday, and then to the Yankee Stadium on the night of the 27th for a get-together with the Dodgers benefiting Sandlot Baseball in New York. Frank Clary with a record of 6-6. Six and six. One and one against the Yankees this year, 22 and seven lifetime. Tony Kubek up, and the first pitch is inside for a ball. Kubek batting 270. The ball got away from Red Wilson. Jim Honeychick calling balls and strikes. Nestor Shylack umpiring at first base. Johnny Stevens at second, and Bill McKinley at third. Eddie Yost shortened up at third. Now uh, Red Wilson asks for time, needs a new mitt. The ball broke the webbing of his mitt. Meantime, Larry tosses a few over to Frank Bowling. Now here comes Red Wilson back up to the plate. Kubek last week had seven for 31, a 266 average, batting 270 overall. Now the next pitch. It's in there for a strike, one and one. Jimmy Dykes is a little unhappy with the way the Tigers have been playing. They've been playing streaky kind of ball. The one-one pitch with Kubek is inside, ball two. But he said it was amazing that the fact that they've been so inconsistent, they still are in fourth place, two games over the 500 mark, and just five games out of the lead. The 2-1 pitch, swung on, a ground ball hit out by second into right field for a base hit. Kubek takes the turn, holds up, as Rocky Colavito whips his throw into Fernandez. Now Bob Serb comes up. Kubek. Singles to right. Serve. Batting 250. Casey Stengel playing uh, one of his hunches. Serve uh, generally hits well in this park. They pitch in there for a strike. And so Bob's in there in left field in place of Hector Lopez. Nothing won the count. Here's the pitch. And low outside gets away from the catcher. And on the second goes Kubek. A wild pitch charged to Frank Larry. Kubek on second. And time's been called. That ball hit Wilson on the left wrist, and uh, apparently he used uh, somebody else's mitt in a hurry when the, the, uh, his own mitt had the webbing uh, broken loose by the first pitch. Now he's gone to the dugout, and Frank Homo, Hummel, the uh, trainer, is... Uh, now, well, I was about to tell you what was happening, but somebody got in the way. Apparently, he's taping up the left wrist. So we can just look down in the corner of the dugout. Now, Jimmy Dykes signals to the uh, Tiger bullpen, and we're going to have to have a catcher. That's an oddity, and here goes Rocky Bridges up to home plate to keep Larry warm. That pitch hit uh, Wilson on the left uh, wrist. And Lou Berberet's going to go in and do the catching. We'll have to await some information to give you further particulars. But apparently uh, Red Wilson went over to have the wrist taped up and the trainer is checking it. Maybe he found something, or maybe uh, it was rather painful, and Jimmy Dykes is uh, getting Lou Berberet to come in and catch. 
trainer Jack Hummel was attending Wilson. Well, that's about as odd a beginning as I've ever seen in a ball game. And Frank Larry um, called Rocky Bridges out to him. Bridges just warming him up to say something to him. And now Bridges has gone into the dugout and is giving the information to Lou Berberette. So Lou Berberette replaces Wilson. He put Berberette in the seventh spot in the batting order. Larry tossing a couple to the chunky catcher. As soon as we have any further information, we'll, of course, send it along to you. I don't know whether the first pitch hit him on the wrist or not, uh, but I, I think it just broke the webbing of the mitt. And then the ball got by him, and the next one could have bounced up and hit him on the wrist and caused injury. One ball, one strike. Bob served the batter and the pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike two, one and two. Bob leveled on a high fastball. Serve betting 250 on the season. A one-two count. Frank Larry to the stretch. And the pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Bob serves. Strikes out. One away now. And Mickey Mantle coming up. Mantle batting 267. Roger Maris to follow. Field shaded toward right. Maxwell, Kaline, and Colavito in left, center, and right, respectively. Kubek on second, one away in the first inning. Frank Larry to the stretch. And the pitch. Swung on to high, slow roller toward first, and it's grabbed by Bilko, and he can't make a play. And Kubek is on to third, the high chopper. All they could do is wait for it. Bilko grabbed him to start to toss to somebody, but across the bag was Mantle uh, with an infield hit, moving Kubek to third. Bringing up Roger Maris. Maris hitting 338. Mantle last week had had five for 17 for a 294 average, including a double, a triple, two homers, four RBIs, and eight walks. Maris last week had 12 for 33 for a 364 gate, including three doubles, two homers, 10 runs batted in, and one walk. Runners on first and third, one out in the first inning. Frank Larry to the stretch. The pitch swung on and missed, strike one, and Maris loses his bat, slips out of his hands. Nothing in one. Again to the stretch and the pitch. It's in there, strike two, nothing in two. Larry lost to Baltimore in his last start, three to one. Went six and two thirds innings, gave up three runs. Quick two strikes on Roger Maris. Now the pitch. And Maris swings and misses, strike three. Struck him out on three pitches. Two down. And the batter is Yogi Berra. Yogi hitting 313. Last week had four out of 15 for a 267 average. Including a one double, one homer, and six runs batted in through one walk. Boy, Larry went to work on Maris. He threw him three pitches all in the same spot. Struck him out. Two men down now. Kubek on third. Mantle on first. Larry ready. They pitch to Yogi. 
outside ball one with a delay occasioned by the change in catchers Whitey Ford went down to the Yankee bullpen and is loosening up some more one ball no strikes two down Larry to the stretch and the pitch it's high ball two to a nothing by the right-hander. Here's the pitch to Yogi. It's inside for ball three. Three nothing. Phil Scourin on deck. Two on and two out. Larry to the stretch, Kubek off third, Mantle off first. The pitch is in there for a strike, three and one. Yogi didn't like the call. Three balls, one strike. gets the sign from Berberette. Runners lead away from first and third. The stretch. There goes Mantle. The pitch is swung on and missed and Mantle steals second without a throw. Full count. Mantle steals second. Seven for seven. Full count on Yogi. Frank Larry with the count of three balls, two strikes, getting set to work. Kubek on third and Mantle on second. The windup and the payoff pitch swung on and fouled off to the left of the plate. Larry rubbing up new ball. And we're set. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Kubek on third, Mantle on second. Frank Larry goes to the windup and the payoff pitch to Yogi. Swung on, a ground ball hit out by first. Backhanded by Bilko. Throws to Larry in time and the side retired. No runs. Two hits. No errors. And two men left on. It was a matter of inches there whether Bill Coe would get it or whether he'd go through for the base hit. And he came up with it. The Yankees nothing and the Tigers coming to bat. Next time you visit your friendly tavern, keep an eye on that tap handle with the three rings on it. And you'll soon see that it's the busiest tap in the business. Because these days, more and more folks are switching to the crisp pressure. Valentine beer. And that's a fact. Here's why. You see, Ballantyne is the one beer that gives you both lightness and flavor. The two things a beer must have to refresh. And right there, you have the reason why Ballantyne is the largest selling beer in the East. I mean, all the way from Maine to Florida. It proves to more and more folks every day that a beer can be light and still give you all the honest-to-goodness lager beer flavor you want. It's the light beer with true lager flavor. So how about treating yourself to Ballantyne? Goes great with a good baseball game. Just open up or order up the crisp for pressure. Ballantyne beer. 
We have now received word that Red Wilson suffered a ruptured blood vessel in his right forearm when that wild pitch bounced up and hit it. Last half of the first inning. Eddie Yost leading off. Chico Fernandez on deck and Charlie Maxwell to follow. WOKO Albany. Who has won two and lost five. All set to work. Whitey has never enjoyed any uh, unusually great success against Tiger teams. While his record is uh, two and five this year, he's lost some rough games could just as easily have been the other way around. The left-hander pitches to Yost, and it's in there for a strike. For example, Whitey lost uh, a one-run game to Washington, a two-run game to Chicago, a one-run game to Baltimore, another one-run game to Chicago. The one-strike pitch, it's a little high, ball one, one and one. Eddie Yost, batting 264, had five for 24 last week. Patient man up that plate. Ford's 1-1 one, one delivery. Curve, and it's in there. Strike two, one and two. One ball, two strikes. Here's the pitch. Curveball bounced toward third. Boyer is up with it on two hops. Throws on to Scourin, and Yost is retired. One away. Now Chico Fernandez, batting 277 on the season. Three for 14 last week. Ford's lifetime record against the uh, Detroit teams is eight and seven. The left-handed pitches, Fernandez takes a curve over, strike one. Charlie Maxwell on deck. Whitey again to the windup. Around comes the left arm, the pitch, fastball, hit on the hop to second, and bounces off the chest. Uh, Richardson out into right field, and Fernandez is aboard. As a line drive, it took a high hop and skipped up the uh, arm, apparently, of uh, Richardson, high into the air and the right, and it scored as a base hit. And now here's Charlie Maxwell. Maxwell hitting 215 on the season. But uh, he's had 10 homers and 29 runs batted in. Doesn't hit consistently, but comes through with a big one. One on, one out. Fernandez is a good base runner. Takes a good lead on Ford. Whitey checks him. And the pitch. It's low outside for a ball. Curve ball. Fernandez has stolen six bases. There's a throw over to first, and Fernandez gets back. Whitey didn't even, uh, he wasn't even on the rubber. He just suddenly flipped the ball over Fernandez takes the good lead again. Ford gets Yogi sign into the stretch. And the pitch. Low for a ball. Two balls, no strikes. Whitey worked against the Tigers May 3rd. Went four innings, give up two runs. Left the game because of a strained elbow. Throw to first, runners back. Again the stretch, Fernandez with his lead, and the pitch. Swung on and fouled back of first on the ground. Strike one, two and one. Two balls, one strike. Whitey to his stretch. And the throw to first, runners back. Now 
now the delivery. It's high, ball three, three and one. Three balls, one strike. That wasn't a quick pitch, but Whitey took the throw from Scarron, and he is in pitching position. He fired into the plate in a hurry. Three balls, one strike. Charlie Maxwell digs in, stretch by Ford. And the pitch. Swung on and missed strike two. Full count. Steve Belko on deck. Fernandez moves off with a good lead. Forward to the stretch. And the pitch. Swung on, there's a fly ball in the left. Bob Serve waiting, takes it for the second out, and Fernandez retreats to first. Now Steve Bilko comes up, hitting 200 on the season. 26 for 130. Six homers, 15 runs batted in. Al Kaline on deck. Whitey Ford into the stretch. And the pitch. Inside, ball one. Backs Belko away. Belko made a pretty good play on Yogi's ball. It was touch and go whether he'd get it or go through for two runs. Ford again to his stretch. And the pitch. It's in there for a strike. One and one. Billy Hitchcock coaching at third. Luke Appling at first. Whitey again ready. And the delivery is a curve outside. Ball two, two and one. Balls, one strike. The left-hander to the stretch. And the moves to first, and Fernandez is back. Again, the stretch by Whitey. And the pitch is a curve, and it's hit back through the middle in the center for a base hit. Fernandez round second, goes on to third. Mantle throws into Richardson. The runners on first and third. Better now is Al Kaline. Kaline hitting 227. 44 for 194. Six homers and 24 runs batted in. Two on and two out in the first inning. Fernandez on third, Bill Coe on first. Whitey ready. And the pitch. High ball one. Rocky Calavito on deck. Board ready. Here's the pitch. Curve is low, ball two, two and nothing. Casey, or something out to uh, Bobby Richardson. Two balls, no strikes, runners leading away from first and third. Here's the pitch, and it is into the dirt, ball three. Blocked by Barra. Three nothing count. Three 
three balls, no strikes, and the pitch in there, strike one, three and one. the stretch. Runners lead away from first and third. The 3-1 pitch is swung on. Hit out towards second. Richardson up with it. Clips to Kubek for the force on Bilko. And that was very nearly a base hit. Richardson raced over to his right. It was a well-hit ball and had to uh, reach out to the side to come up with that bid for the base hit. Turning it into the force out at second on Bilko and the side's retired. No runs. Two hits. No errors and two left on. Al Kaline had been benched. He'd had one for his last 13. He's back in the ball game tonight, as well as Rocky Colavito, after giving, uh, having been given a rest by Jimmy Dykes. One of the traditional uh, ways of breaking a slump. In the first half of the second inning, the Yankees will have Scourin, Boyer, and Richardson coming up. The numbers six, seven, and eight hitters in the order. Remember, the Yankees will be home next Monday night with the Los Angeles Dodgers and the following night with the Kansas City A's. The first of the three-game series for the A's. Tigers will be in on Friday night, July 1st, Saturday afternoon the 2nd, and doubleheader on Sunday, July 3rd. Frank Larry pitching to Moose Scourin, who swings and lifts a high fly ball down the right field line. Bilko going over, now bowling, and Calavito and bowling makes the catch. In fair territory. In medium right field. Moose Scourin, who was hitting 299, goes after that first pitch. Scourin uh, hit 292 last week, 7 for 24. Cleet Boyer, batting 266. Frank Larry to the windup, the pitch. It's in there for a strike. Boyer had a good week. Eight for 26 for a 308 average. Had three doubles and two homers. The one strike pitch on its way to the right hand batter. Swung on, grounded to third, scooped up by Eddie Yost, the throw over to first in time. Two up and two away. Now Bobby Richardson batting 222. Bobby hit 296 last week with eight for 27. No score, second inning. Frank Larry's first pitch to Bobby. Over, strike one. Larry likes to get ahead of them. Most pitchers do, of course, but he's got pretty good stuff. And he'll get that first strike on you. Now the next one. It's low outside, ball one, one and one. One ball, one strike. Frank Larry delivers. Richardson swings and grounds it to short. Fernandez up with it. The throw on to first is in time. And the side is retired. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on. At the end of an inning and a half, New York nothing, Detroit nothing.
It's the last half of the second inning. Rocky Calavito first up, Lou Berberet on deck, and Frank Bowling to follow. Calavito batting 220. Dead 10 homers and 23 runs batted in. Ford into the windup and the pitch to the rock. Inside, ball one. One nothing pitch to the right hand batter. Swung on. There's the drive to deep left field. Sir, racing toward the screen, makes the catch. Bob Sir raced over the left field line and about five feet from the screen took Rocky Calavito's line drive. One away, and here's Lou Berberet. Lou's had 20 for 107, batting 187. Board to the windup and the pitch to Berberet. It's in there for a strike. Curveball. No balls, one strike. And the next pitch. Curve is swung on and fouled back out of play. Nothing in two. Two strike offering. Sidearm fastball is inside at the letters. One and two. The one two pitch to Berberet. High two two. The Yanks and Tigers have been at one another for many years and have stayed close to one another. The Yankees have won 650 games and the Tigers 598. The 2-2 pitch on its way to Berberet. Swung on, grounded wide at first, up with a discount, and he kicks it. He lost the ball, and as Ford got over, the ball rolled down and Moose kicked it with his foot over towards second. So Berberet is aboard on an error. Moose bobbled it momentarily. As it dropped down, he went down to pick it up again to toss on to Ford. Had plenty of time. And in the movement of his feet, he accidentally kicked it over toward second base. One on then and one out. And here's Frank Bowling batting 208. He always plays well against New York. Ford checks the runner. The pitch is over the inside corner for a strike. Bowling hit 280 last week, 7 for 25. No balls, one strike. Now the delivery. Swung on, foul back. Nothing in two. No balls, two strikes. Lou Berberet on first base. Ford gets his sign into the stretch. And the pitch. Fastball high and away. Frank Bowling went to Spring Hill College outside of Mobile, Alabama. Got himself a degree. Ford's pitch is a curve foul back out of play. Count remains one and two. A couple of years back, Bowling was given uh, the golden glove, as it were, 
for the best fielding second baseman in the league. He's always looked like a tremendous ball player against New York. The only time naturally we get to see him. One ball, two strikes, one out. No score last of the second. Ford wants the sign from Yogi. Into the stretch. And the pitch. Fastball hit back to the box. Ford throws to Richardson for one. Back on to Moose. Double play. Sides retired. No runs. No hits. One error. And no one left on. At the end of two innings of play, the Yankees, no runs, two hits. One error, two left on. The Tigers, no runs, two hits. No errors, two men left on base. That was the Yankees' 60th double play. Right now, we pause for station identification. Fourteen sixty on the radio dial. Your station for music, news, and sports in the Capital District of Albany's Connected Ian Troy, WOKO, serving you with the best of everything. Six minutes before ten. The White Sox lead Baltimore one to nothing into two and a half innings. Pearson Barber, Cleveland leading Washington five to four end of six innings. Kupstein took over for Grant in the seventh. Ramos for Washington. Ramos hit a homer. So did Dobeck and Batty with one on. Keen with one on for the Indians. Casale and Daly, Boston and Kansas City. In the National League, Pittsburgh leading the Cardinals 3-1 to one at the end of six and a half innings. Law and Gibson. Cincinnati 2, Los Angeles nothing at the end of three. Perky and Padres. Chicago and Philadelphia playing the last of the 12th inning of the first game of the Twinite doubleheader. 6-6. Six, six. Cardwell for the Cubs, relieved by Elston in the sixth. Hobby in the tenth. Owens for Philadelphia. Banks has had two homers, 19th and 20th. Waller is a pair for the Bills and Herrera. Milwaukee defeated the Giants 9-6 in the first game of Twinite doubleheader. Brunette the winner. Pichet relieved in the sixth. McCormick for San Francisco. Shipley and Odell and Lowe's in the fifth. Odell charged with a loss. Miranda came on in the seventh. Whitey Ford at bat. Takes the ball as we play in the third inning. Home runs in that game were hit by Mays, Cepeda, and Long. And for Milwaukee, Crandall, Aaron, and Adcock. Larry's delivery to Whitey. Swung on. A grounder hits to Bilko. Big Steve up with it. Outruns Ford and one away. Now Tony Kubek to open the game with a single to right. Bob served to follow. Frank Larry into the windup and the pitch on its way. Round the letters inside, ball one. In their lifetime get together, the Yankees have won 29 season series, the Tigers 21 and seven wound up in ties. Here's the changeup. There's a Knuckler, actually. It's inside the ball, too. Two and nothing. Next pitch is swung on and bounced down to first. Bilko has it. And he outruns Kubek to the bag, although Kubek almost beat him. By the fourth, the crowd gets a kick out of it. Bilko started to throw to uh, Larry and then decided he'd keep it. And we had uh, two trains running in, uh, on the same track in opposite directions. That is to say, headed toward one another. Here's Bob Serve, strikeout victim in the first inning. The pitch in there, strike one. Bob likes to go for the long one in this park. Frank Larry delivers and serves. Swings, lifts a high foul to the right of the plate, and it's out of play. No balls, two strikes. Frank Larry ready to work. 
No score, third inning, two away. And the two-strike pitch. Swung on, and it's fouled off out of play to the right of the plate, up onto the roof. This is a favorite hunting ground for Ted Williams. For the long one. The two-strike pitch, knuckleballs inside, one and two. In fact, one of the things that militates off and against the team coming in here, the stands look very inviting. And uh, the guys uh, do away with their normal routine. Here's the pitch, swung on, a grounder hit the short, big hop to Fernandez, throw on to first in time, and the side's retired. No runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on. At the end of two and a half innings, New York nothing, Detroit nothing. Instead of uh, trying to meet the ball, the fellow just can't resist They're trying to uppercut one. That's what a pitcher wants him to do. I know one thing that you can't resist, I hope you can't, and that's the crisp, uh, you know, the crisp refresher, Valentine beer. Valentine beer proves to more people every day that a beer can be light and still give you all the honest to goodness lager beer flavor you want. Valentine's the light beer with true lager flavor. That satisfying combination of lightness and flavor makes Valentine the crisp refresher. So if lightness alone won't do for you, if you want a beer with flavor too, then mister, you just make the good old three ring sign and ask the man for Valentine. Enjoy the crisp refresher. Frank Larry leads off in the last half of the third. Larry, pretty fair hitting pitchers, had five for 33. One homer, six runs batted in. Right hand batter. Whitey Ford to the windup. Here's the pitch to Larry. And it's in there for a strike. Nothing and one the count on Larry. Whitey delivers and Larry takes a fastball over. Strike two. Nothing and two. Art Dittmar is scheduled to pitch tomorrow against Paul Foytag. The Yankees will catch Mossy in the last game. Next delivery, curve is lined out into right field for a base hit. Frank Larry with a two-strike count. Punches a curveball to right field for a base hit. So there's one on and nobody out now with the top of the order coming up. Eddie Yost, Chico Fernandez, and Charlie Maxwell. Eddie grounded to third in the first inning. Ford throws over to first, runners back. Whitey into the stretch, and the pitch outside, ball one. The next delivery, fast ball, and it's low, ball two, two and nothing. Whitey was a little upset with the base hit by Larry. He swung around, pounded his fist into his glove. He just hung the curveball up there. Now the 2-0 delivery. It's outside for ball three, 3-0. Three Eddie Yost, a patient man at the plate. Three nothing pitch. It's over. Strike one. Three and one. 
Eddie takes a look at Billy Hitchcock. See if he's got to take on or not. Crescetti motions to Boyer to deep on his third. Here's a 3-1 pitch, and it's ball four. A little high. That moves Larry down to second. 56 walks for Eddie Yost. who led the league in walks in 1950, 52, 53, 56, and 59. And Boyer goes over to talk to Whitey. They want to get together on uh, their signal in the event of a bunt down the line as to who will play the ball. Fernandez singled in the first inning flashing a single off the chest of uh, Bobby Richardson into right field. Runners on first and second. Nobody out. Ford into the stretch. And the throw is over to first base. Runners are back. Again the stretch. And the pitch. It's inside for a ball. One ball, no strikes. Chico has been the Tigers' leading hitter percentage-wise. Yankees are playing for the bunt. Ford ready. Here's the pitch, and Fernandez bunts foul. One and one the count. Because of his speed and ability to bunt, he was trying to bunt for the base hit instead of the deliberate sacrifice. It's always an advantage nationally. You have a man can do that because he's got a chance of beating it out. One ball, one strike. Larry on second, Yost on first. Nobody out in the third inning. Ford into the stretch. As a throw to second, and Larry just gets back. Had a pickoff play put on, but Frank Larry got back in time. Ford again to the stretch. Here's the pitch. Fernandez takes the strike over the inside corner. One and two. Shortened up as if the bunt and took the pitch. You're arguing a little bit now with Jim Honeychick. Now, Fernandez takes a look at Hitchcock, so we'll see what he's doing. One ball, two strikes. Ford into the stretch. Runners lead away from first and second. The pitch is swung on and popped up into the air. And the infield fly rule is called. The batter's automatically out. Richardson makes the basket catch. Fernandez pops out to Richardson. And here's Charlie Maxwell. He's flying to left in the first inning. and Scourin both are still playing the bunt. You had to protect against it with Fernandez up there. Now Moose is deep with uh, old Pawpaw at bat, Charlie Maxwell. Here's the pitch. And it's a little high, ball one. One ball, no strikes. Frank Larry on second, Eddie Yost on first, as a result of a base hit and a walk. Four to his stretch, and the pitch to Maxwell to curve, hit up into the air, a high hop into short left. Kubek is backpedaling, the wind carrying it, and he makes the catch. I don't know whether they ever called the infield fly rule on that or not. It was a tough one for him to call, and finally they did. Here's Steve Bilko. Uh, that was a tough one for the umpires to call because the ball kept carrying. And, of course, the rule says that if a ball hit into the air, in the judgment of the umpire, can be handled by an infielder with runners on first and second, or first, second, and third, less than two out. He can bulk the infield fly rule, and the batter's automatically out. 
Here now is Steve Bilko, who got a base hit to center in the first inning. They pitch in there for a strike. Al Kaline on deck. Larry on second. Yost on first. Ford into the stretch. And the pitch. Fastball is high and away, and the count's one and one. One ball, one strike. Runners lead away. Whitey Ford pitches and Bilko takes strike two over the inside corner. One and two. Looks as if he threw him a slider. A one-two count. Runners lead away from first and second, and the pitch is swung on, grounded toward short. Two back up with it, throws on to Scarron in time, and the side's retired. And Ford worked himself out of a jam. No runs, one hit, no errors, and two men left on. At the end of three innings, the Yankees, no runs, two hits, one error, two left on. Detroit, no runs, three hits, no errors, and four men left on base. Remember now, beer's got to have two things to really refresh you, lightness and flavor. And Valentine beer's got them both. It's the light beer with true lager flavor. That's what makes it the crisp refresher. So enjoy our frosty glass of Valentine soon. Remember now, the Yankees uh, have announced that mail orders for the 1960 All-Star Game at Yankee Stadium will be accepted. Mail orders will be limited to four seats for order should be postmarked on or before July 5th. Everything will be handled on a first-come, first-served basis. Reserved seat ticket, 6.30. A limited number of box seats at 8.40. Mail orders should be addressed to all-star tickets carry Yankee Stadium, Bronx 51, New York. A certified check, banker's cashier check, United States money order, Western Union money order, or express money order made payable to the New York Yankees. 75 cents must be added to each total order for mailing and registering charges. Enjoyed sitting in with you. Phil Rizzuto will be coming over as we get ready to move to the fourth inning. We're going to go over to finish up on the TV side, and we'll be talking to you again tomorrow night. Bill will be on right after we pause for station identification. You are tuned to 1460 on the radio dial. This is WOKO, Albany, New York. Time on the WOKO clock is 11 minutes after the hour of 10. everybody we're ready to go here in the top of the fourth inning the scoreless ball game between the Yankees and the Detroit Tigers Mickey Mantle who beat out an infield single has to jump out of the way of an inside curveball ball one boy they made Mickey skip the rope that time Mickey also stole a base in the first inning the one nothing pitch, low, ball two, two and nothing. Lou Berberet doing the catching. Red Wilson started the game. In the very first inning, he was hit with a uh, pitch thrown by Frank Larry that bounced in the dirt and off his forearm and ruptured some blood vessels. He had to leave the game. Curve is over, strike call. Two balls, one strike. On deck is Roger Maris. Larry was in a jam in the first inning. Had runners at first and third with only one out and struck out Maris. Got Yogi to bounce out. Mickey swings and misses strike two. He pitched him low outside. Mick was trying to pull it in those inviting right field seats. It's only 325 feet down the line. And it goes kind of straight across to where in right center is 370. 340 down the left field line. There's a foul out of play down the left field line. Two and two the count. Every once in a while, Frank Larry will quick pitch, take a short wind-up, and try and get the batter between swings. Two 
two and two on Mickey. Pitch, strike three, called a sidearm curveball. Strikeout number three for Frank Larry. Here's Roger Maris who struck out in the first inning. Larry has defeated the Yankees 22 times, losing to them only seven times. One out, nobody on. Pitch to Maris. A little bit high, ball one. nothing pitch. His line deep to left center field. Way back there. Maxwell going. It's off the wall. One hop. They line up with it. Maris around second. Digging for third. And he's going to be in there with a triple. Boy, did Maris hit that one over 400 feet to deep left center field. Hit number three off Larry. And for Roger Maris, his third triple of the year. Boy, he hit that ball a long ways to the opposite field. Now Kaline was playing over in right center. Had to go a long ways to get that ball off the screen. There's a low brick wall and a screen about six feet above that. All right, Yogi Berra the batter. Yogi bounced out to first base in the first inning. No score in the top of the fourth. The infield is playing in for a possible play at the plate. Larry will really have to bear down. Pitch to Yogi. It's a wild pitch. And in comes Maris to score. As Larry was trying to put a little extra on the ball. Frank Larry tried to throw real hard to Yogi. His second wild pitch of the ball game allows Maris to score. And the Yankees take a one nothing lead. He was really trying to put some extra on that. Ball almost hit Yogi in the foot and rolled right back to the screen. One out, nobody on. Pitch to Yogi is fouled back in the seat. One ball, one strike. On deck, Bill Scarlett. There's a high fly to not too deep right center field. Al Kaline coming in under it and makes the catch. Two-way. Here's Bill Scarron who hopped out to the second baseman in the second inning. Who's batting just under 300. There's a curve over, strike one call. Tuckle ball, low outside, ball one, one and one. up by Larry. The 1-1 one, one pitch is hit on the ground up the middle and out to center field. A base hit. Scarron bounces a single through the middle. Hit number four off Larry. Here's Cletus Boyer who bounced out to third base in the second inning. Larry says, Scarron leads away. The pitch high outside, ball one. On deck, Bobby Richardson. Frank Crisetti coaching at third, Ralph Hogg down at first. Boyer takes a curve low outside, ball two, two and nothing. Larry sets again. Boy, it takes a curve low, ball three, three and nothing.
Here's a three nothing delivery. It's in there. Strike call. Not quite a sellout crowd tonight. They expected one, but it's a good crowd. Pitch is swung and a missed strike two as Boyle was trying to hit that ball to right field. He's got a big hole. Frank Bowling, the second baseman, playing near second base, and Bilko holding the runner on as a big hole to shoot through between first and second. The 3 2 pitch, ground ball to short. Fernandez goes to first base in time to get Boyle. For the Yankees in the top of the fourth, one run on two hits. No Tiger errors, one man left on base to score at the end of three and a half innings. The Yankees won, Detroit nothing. inning leading off for Detroit Al Kaline Kaline bounced out to second base in the first inning Bobby Richardson making a fine play one nothing the Yankees lead on deck Rocky Colavito first pitch to Kaline slow curve is high ball one Detroit was shut out twice Sunday and home plate very elusive another curve line to left field a base hit serve to his right is up with it K-line around first and holds on serve throw cut off by Kubek hit number four off Ford and here's Rocky Calavito Rocky hit one deep to the left field wall his first time at bat nobody out K-line leading off first to stretch. Pitch is low ball one. Yogi bluffs the throw down to first base. Rocky pointing that bat out at the pitcher. Fastball swung and a miss. Strike one, one and one. Sets again. Fastball is low inside ball two. Two months. <laughs> Darren holding first against Kaline. Stretch by Whitey. Fastball swung and a missed strike two. Throw to first. Kaline back. Whitey seems to be chopping down on the ball. But when a fellow's been all fouled up the way Rocky has just about all year, start experimenting, get yourself further in trouble. Two and two the count. Yankees one, Detroit nothing. Whitey stretches. Fastball pops in the air to short left field. Bob serve is moving in under it and makes the catch. Twice Rocky has slid out to left field. Didn't get the good wood on this one. Here's Lou Berberet who reached on an error in the second inning.
First pitch to Berber at low outside, ball one. Mm. Left hand hitting Lou Berber at digging in at the plate. Pitch long at it, miss. Strike one, one on one. Telling me about Bear Barrett giving them a big thrill here. Sunday came up to pinch hit with the Tigers trailing 2 0, two men on, and he hit a long foul ball in the upper deck, just missed being a homer, and flied out. 1 1 pitch is a curve foul back out of play. One ball, two strikes. Here's the stretch by Whitey. This pitch is high inside, counts even two and two. Mantle playing kind of a shallow left center field on Berberet. Serve shallow and left. Maris is deep and right. K-line leading off first base. pitch is hit on the ground back to Whitey wheels around throws to Kubek for one throw to first in time for the double play two double plays started by Whitey Ford for Detroit in the bottom of the fourth no runs one hit no Yankee errors nobody left the score at the end of four full innings the Yankees have one run on four hits one error Detroit no runs four hits and no error Depends from here on this game from here on, this game is brought to you by the Atlantic Refining Company and your neighborhood Atlantic dealer, the folks who keep your car on the go. Atlantic keeps your car on the go. What they meant for pleasure in any kind of weather, Atlantic keeps your car on the go. When you want to go places and do things, what a pleasure your driving can be. For quality products and top notch service, your Atlantic dealer is the man to see. Atlantic keeps your car on the go, 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 go. Keep on the go with Atlantic. Moving now into the top half of the fifth inning, with the Yankees leading in the ball game one to nothing. The Yankees and the Tigers again tomorrow night, then on Thursday afternoon. Friday night into Cleveland for a four-game set. Friday night, Saturday afternoon, and a big doubleheader on Sunday. And then the Yankees, who at least up to this point have had a sensational Western trip, will return to Yankee Stadium next Monday night, meeting the Los Angeles Dodgers in the Sandlot Benefit game, and then meeting all the Western clubs. Bobby Richardson, the batter, and lines the first pitch in the left field for a base hit. That's hit number five off Larry. Brings up Whitey four. Whitey bounced out to first base in the third inning. Yankees lead one nothing here in the top of the fifth inning. Eddie O's coming way in at third. The pitch is bunted out and fouled back. Strike one. Steve Bilko holding Richardson close. Here's the stretch. Throw to first. Richardson back. Larry sets. There goes Richardson. The ball is bunted foul on the first baseline. It's a good play. Almost a sure way to get the runner down to second. If the... Batter can bunt the ball, have him running, and then no matter where you bunt the ball, if it's on the ground, he can advance. Nothing in two on Whitey. Larry sets the pitch, is hit on the ground. 
And backhanded by Bilko, throw to second, what a play Bilko made, back to first, not in time. And there was as pretty a play as you'd want to see by the best first baseman playing around. Bilko went far to his right, backhanded the ball in the webbing of his glove, straightened up and fired to Fernandez covering second to get Bobby Richardson. And Bilko has been having a busy night down at first base. He has fielded four ground balls, flawlessly so, besides the one thrown to him by the infielder. Whitey Port puts on a jacket. Tony Kubek, who singled and bounced the first to batter. One out. Toko playing in back of the runner at first. Here's the stretch. Pitch to Kubek is lined over Bilko's head this time, a one hop up. Calavillo up with it, and uh, Whitey Ford holds on at second base. There was a vicious one hopper that Bilko went down on one knee for, and it bounded over his head as Tony Kubek gets his second base hit of the ball game. Hit number six. And it looks like they're gunning for Big Steve down at first base. Giving him a lot of work, that's for sure. Bob Serve, who struck out and bounced to short the batter. Yankees have runners at first and second with one out. New York leads 1-0 here in the top of the fifth. Pitch to serve outside ball one. Hank Lowry bluffs the throw down to second base. Making Ford jump back in a hurry. On deck, Mickey Mantle. Here's the stretch. Pitch is hit on the ground. Backhanded by Bowling. He steps on second, throws the first. Double play. Another pretty play. Boy, the feeling has been beautiful to watch tonight. As Bowling went deep to his right, backhanded the ball, stepped on second, and threw off balance to first for the double play. They're taking base hits away from these hitters. Right and left tonight for the Yankees in the top of the fifth. No runs. Two hits, no destroyed errors, and one man left. The score at the end of four and a half innings. The Yankees won Detroit nothing. Ever hear of a gasoline that doubles as a mechanic? In a way, Atlantic Imperial gasoline does just that. Here's how. When you drive, exhaust fumes and other air contaminants escape your air cleaner and collect in the carburetor in the form of deposits. Now, even a small amount of deposits can cause an improper mixture of air and gasoline. When this happens, stalling, rough idling, and actual gasoline waste results. Now, one way to handle a dirty carburetor is to get under the hood and clean it manually, but why go to all that trouble and expense when Atlantic Imperial does the job for you without even raising the hood? Atlantic Imperial actually cleans your carburetor as you drive and keeps it clean. Now, with a clean carburetor, you get proper mixture of gasoline and air. You'll enjoy smooth engine performance, greater gasoline economy. Give it a try. Use Atlantic Imperial gasoline to keep your car on the go. This is quite a ball game. See, that was quite a fight the other night, wasn't it? Last night, as a matter of fact, I went over with most of the boys on the Yankee team to watch it at the theater here in Detroit. And I tell you, when Patterson hit him that last left hook, and knocked Bingo back on his head. I got a headache soon. I don't know what it was from, whether the force of the blow or seeing Johansson's head hit the canvas. It was quite a fight. In the bottom of the fifth inning, Frank Bowling, who made that fine fielding play, to end the top of the fifth inning. Leads off, bowling hit into a double play in the second inning. Right hand hitting second baseman. Whitey Ford on the mound for New York. His first pitch to bowling is high ball one. Detroit has not been hitting at all. They came into this ball game with a 221 team average. The Yankees have a 267 team average. One nothing pitch curveball, pop foul. Yogi chasing it back, but I believe it's going back into the stand. It does. Out of play. 
There's not too much room between home plate and the screen back of home plate. Catches don't get too much work here. And they like it that way. Nobody out and nobody on in the bottom of the fifth. One one pitch is a strike call. One ball, two strikes. Here's the windup by Whitey. Best ball, high ball two, two and two. Two balls, two strikes. Billy Hitchcock coaching at third. Old Luke Appling down at first. All right, here's Whitey into the windup. The 2-2 two -two pitch is popped in the air to straightaway center. Matt will have no trouble with this one. He's right there under it and hauls it in. That's one away. That'll bring up Frank Larry, who's single to right field in the third inning. Larry has one home run to his credit this year. Got that down in Washington. Frank Strong Larry from Northport, Alabama. Built like a fullback, 5'11", 180 pounds. Larry hits the ground ball slowly to short. Kubek's in, up with the ball, over to Scarron, and it's two-way. Two quick outs here in the bottom of the fifth, and here's Eddie Yost, bounce to third and walk. Yost got his 56th walk of the year. Mantle has 54. First pitch to Yost. Low curve over strike one call. Whitey into the windup again. A fastball at time. Hit one hop back to Ford. He's up with it. Over to Scarin and it's three away. And for Detroit in the bottom of the fifth. No runs, no hits, no Yankee errors. Nobody left to score at the end of five full innings. Yankees won, Detroit nothing, and we pause for station identification. You are tuned to 1460 on the radio dial of the WOKO, Albany, New York. Time on the WOKO clock is in 25 seconds, 23 minutes before 11. Well, the Yankees will be home for a brief homestand. And they'll be the only games in New York until July 22nd. The Yankees will be home to play the champion Los Angeles Dodgers in the Sandlot Baseball Benefit Exhibition on Monday night, June 27th. That'll be followed by a three-game set with the Kansas City Athletics. And Andy Carey, who's back in good health once again and broke up the ball game for KC last night. They can double in a home up. Hank Bauer, Jerry Lumpy, Bud Daly, and company will return to the stadium on Tuesday night, June 28th, followed by day games on Wednesday and Thursday, June 29th and 30th. And then on Friday night, July 1st, our old Tiger Tormentors, and we're watching them right here now with Frank Larry, who's out on the mound, and all the boys will be in for a four-game series. They meet in the night game on Friday, July 1st, in a Ladies' Day afternoon game on Saturday, July 2nd, and in a big bargain bill doubleheader on Sunday afternoon, July 3rd. Better order your choice of tickets now while the better selection of seats is available. Here's Mickey Mantle, who beat out an infield single, stole second, and then was called out on strikes. One for two for Mick. On deck, Roger Maris. Here's Frank Lowry, swinging into the windup. Pitch for Mickey is a curve inside ball one. Nothing pitch knuckleball foul back, and I think that was off Mickey's foot. 
watching a lot of that tonight. One ball, one strike. Nobody out and nobody on. Pitch is hit high in the air to deep right field. And Calavito, he couldn't get it. It went in for a home run. Rocky Calavito gave it a game try. He got to the fence, put his right hand on top of the fence and leaped as high as he could. And it just went over Calavito's glove into the lower right field seat for a home run for Mickey Mantle. And the Yankees take a 2 to nothing lead. And for Mickey, that's his 15th home of the year and his 31st run batted in. Well, Mick is starting to hit that ball now, and he and Roger Maris sure are having a one-two punch. I'll tell you that. Roger tripled in the fourth inning and scored on a wild pitch. That's Mantle's first home run off Detroit pitching this year. And his ninth home run in the month of June. There's a fastball inside. Boy, it's been a good June for Mickey. Had one on June 1st, June 5th, two on June 8th, June 9th, 10th, 17th, 18th, and tonight. Maris takes the pitch over. Strike one, one and one. There's one reason why... Uh, Mantle and the rest of the Yankees like to hit in this park, in the stadium. In other parks, that's an easy out. There's a curve hit foul down the right field line. Strike two. One ball, two strikes. Two nothing, the Yankees lead. We're in the top of the sixth inning. Knuckleball, Maris hits it on the ground a second. Bowling's up with it. Over to Bilko, and that's one away. Brings up Yogi Berra, who bounced to first base and fly to center field. Nobody on. Pitch to Yogi is lying to center field for a base hit this time. K line is over, up with it. A line single to center for Yogi. Hit number eight off Larry. Here's Bill Scarin. The moose hops to second and single to center. tell you when a pitcher has to face a lineup like the Yankees have in there he knows he's got his work cut out for him pitch to Scarron is hit on the ground to third but foul Low, ball one, one and one. The Cleveland beat Washington by four. White Sox lead Baltimore three, nothing. The end of five. Kansas City leads the Red Sox five, nothing at the end of two. Pitch is line, base hit to right center field. Yogi. Going into second, he's around second, he's going to third, here's the throw in and Yogi's in. As Scarron rifled a single to right center field. And that's hit number nine off Larry, and we've got action in the bullpen. Big right hander getting up. Sisler, big right-hander, gets up to loosen up in the Detroit bullpen. Eddie Yost and Lou Berberette out on the mound talking with Frank Larry. 
Mary has been hit hard, though he's pitched well in the clutch. And he's got a clutch spot right now. He's got runners at first and third with one out, and Cletus Boy at the batter. Cletus bounced to third and bounced to short. Infields in double play depth. Yankees are leading 2 0. We're in the top of the sixth. Pitch to Boyer. He's hit on the ground to short. Fernandez to bowling for one. Back to first. Safe at first. The throw from Fernandez to bowling was not too good. And bowling had to throw the ball off balance. Barrett scores. Gowan went into the bag hard. And he's looking at his left wrist. He's walking in all right. He hit that bag real hard trying to break up the double play. Didn't hit bowling, but when he hit the bag, he rolled over a couple of times. So on the fourth play, from the shortstop to the second baseman, Yogi scores. Boyer safe at first, and Boyer gets credit for an RBI, and the Yankees lead three to nothing. Fernandez tried to hurry the play a little too much and threw low to bowling, and bowling had to try and flip the ball underhand, off balance, and his throw was not in time. Here's Bobby Richardson, bounced a short single to center. Two out. Pitch is outside, ball one. Fastball hit high in the air to center field. Al Kaline moving back under it. Makes the catch. For the Yankees in the top of the sixth, two runs on three base hits. No Detroit errors, one man left for the score at the end of five and a half innings. New York three and Detroit nothing. Well, Mr. Thompson, we found the trouble. Your carburetor is dirty. Look, you mean that little bit was enough to do it? That's right. Because of the close clearance in the carburetor, just a small amount of deposit can cause a throttle plate to feed the wrong mixture of air and gasoline. So your engine stalls a lot, idles rough, and wastes gasoline. But what causes that deposit? You know I take good care of my car. It's not your fault. You see exhaust fumes and other stuff in the air get by your air cleaner and build up in your carburetor. Well, isn't there any way I can prevent these deposits? There is now. Just start using Atlantic Imperial gasoline. Atlantic Imperial? Why? Well, it's because the Atlantic Imperial they make today will actually clean out your carburetor and keep it clean while you drive. You mean I won't have to spend money to have my carburetor cleaned again? No, sir. Atlantic Imperial gasoline is all you need to keep your carburetor clean. Try it. Okay, Bill, you sold me. My next tank full is Atlantic Imperial. In the bottom of the sixth inning, Chico Fernandez, who singled and popped to second, will lead off. The Yankees are leading three to nothing. They scored one in the fourth and two in the sixth. It'll be Fernandez, Maxwell, and Bilko. Whitey Ford out on the mound for New York. Loosening up with Ralph Hout. Waiting for Yogi Berra to come out. And here comes Yogi now. Looks like Yogi ripped his pants. Looks like he... Come running out, adjusting... The new uniform that it looks like he just put on. And the fans are starting to applaud. That's why Ford's loosening up slowly. The moose is really all covered with dirt out there. He slid and rolled over about three times. He got it all over him, all over his uniform. Here comes Yogi now. Now the fans get on Yogi. Chico Fernandez steps into the batter's box. Ford on the mound. Peter Spoyer playing in at third. First pitch to Chico is a curve over. Strike one call. Why 
Right into the windup. Slow curve, a little low this time. Ball one, one and one. Yankees have nine base hits and three runs. Detroit, four hits and no runs. Here's the wind up by Whitey. Another curve, it's outside, ball two. Two and one. Fernandez standing square with the plate. Swings and misses a low fastball. Boy, that was a bad pitch. Chico must have been guessing that time. He was going for the down. And that pitch wasn't more than two inches off the ground. Two and two. Fastball is low, ball three. Three and two. So Chico could have had himself a base on ball. Was a little over anxious. Here's the payoff pitch. Hit on the ground is short. Two back. A long throw. In time to get Fernandez one away. Brings up Charlie Maxwell, who fly to left and pop to short. One out, nobody on. On deck, Steve Bilko. Here's Whitey's first pitch to Maxwell. Curve in the dirt, ball one. Nothing pitch is hit on the ground at second base. Richardson is up with this one. Over to Scar and two away. And here's Steve Bilko who singled and bounced to short. deep in the box. On deck is Al Kaline. Whitey's pitch to Bilko is low, ball one. Outfield plays Bilko just about straight away. Not a full hitter. One nothing pitches a curve. Foul back strike one. One and one. Whitey ready again. Fastball is high ball two. Two and one. Two out, nobody on. Yankees three, Detroit nothing. We're on the bottom of the sixth inning. The two-one pitch is top foul down the right field line and going back into the stands out of play. Two on Steve. Four checks to sign from Barra. Here's the wind up by the left hand. Fast ball, low ball three, three and two. Full count on the big first baseman. the payoff pitch to Bilko. Ground ball hits slowly to third. Boyer up with a big hop. Over to Scarin for the out. So for Detroit in the bottom of the sixth. No runs, no hits, no Yankee errors. Nobody left to score at the end of six full innings. 
The Yankees, three runs, nine hits, one error. Detroit, no runs, four hits, and no errors. On the scoreboard, at the end of seven innings, it's the White Sox, three, Baltimore, two, Barber against Pierce, Walt Drupal home in the sixth with one on for Baltimore's two runs. Cleveland defeated Washington 5-4, Grant the winner, Ramos the loser. Dobeck, Ramos, and Batty home in for Washington. Keene had one for Cleveland. Kansas City 5, Boston nothing at the end of 3. Sturdivant against Daly, Jerry Lumpy home in. In the National League, the Pirates beat the Cardinals 3-2. Law the winner, and Gibson the loser. Well, that's 11 wins for Law already. And Cincinnati leads Los Angeles 5-4 at the end of 6. Palmquist against Perky. Locker, Roseboro, and Post have home in, in that game. And in 13 innings, the Phillies beat the Cubs 7-6. Farrell the winner, Hobby the loser. Ernie Banks with two homers, his 19th and 20th of the year. Wallers had two, and Herrera had one. In the second game, the Cubs scored twice in the top of the first. The Phillies batting. Mark Freeman, an ex-Yankee, pitching for Chicago, and Buzz Hart for the Phillies. Milwaukee defeated the Giants 9-6 in the first of two. Brunette the winner, Odell the loser. Mays, Cepeda, and Long home it for the Giants. Crandall, Aaron, and Adcock for Milwaukee. In the second game, it's... Nothing, nothing at the end of two and a half. Stanford against Pizarro. Whitey Ford leading off. And the top of the seventh takes the pitch outside, ball one. Whitey bounced to first in the third inning and again to first in the fifth inning. Ground ball to first again, and it went by Bilko this time. It went right under Bilko's glove. Let's see what they give him. It was hit hard, but right, it's a base hit for Whitey Ford. A single right field. Bilko got to the ball that time, but just couldn't get his glove down in time. And Whitey wants his warm-up jacket. He's perspiring, and his uniform is wet, and he wants the jacket so that he doesn't catch cold. There's a chill wind blowing here in Detroit. So Whitey gets his second base hit of the year. And it brings up Tony Kubek. That's 10 hits for New York or Frank Larry. And they don't often enjoy a day or a night like that against Larry. So they have just three runs. That's the score, Yankees three, Detroit nothing. Here's the stretch. Pitch to Kubek is butted in front of the plate. Larry is up with it, starts the second, then throws the first just in time to get Kubek. He drew his arm back and looked at second base, then decided against it and drew off balance to first. The sacrifice is successful. From the pitcher to the second baseman covering, now brings up Bob Sir, who struck out, bounced to short, and then hit into a double play. serve is line to right field coming on fast Calavito and Rocky makes the catch serve hit that right off the end of his bat two out and here's Mickey Mantle who singled struck out and homered Mickey two for three tonight and he's really been getting on base lately Takes off a couple of signs. Now he stretches. Pitch to Mickey is a curve over strike one call. Ford leading off second. Knuckleball hit high in the air to left field. Charlie Maxwell digging way over to his right. Still going. And there's a home run in the left field seat for Mickey Mantle. A low knuckle ball. That ball was about a foot off the ground. Hit it high in the air. We told you the wind is blowing pretty well out the left field. It got up in that wind. Maxwell chased it back to the wall and it went into the left field seat for a home run. Mantle's second home of the night. Giving him three RBIs. The Yankees lead five to nothing. For Mantle, his 16th home run of the year. And what a month of June he's having. Ten home runs in the month of June for Mickey Mantle. 
And here's Roger Maris, who struck out, tripled, and bounced to second base. And the first pitch to Maris is over everybody's head and against the screen. That's the second time in the month of June that Mantle has hit two home runs left-handed. He did it against the White Sox. One off short, one off more. And he hits two off here off Frank Larry. The next pitch to Maris is a knuckleball outside, ball two, two and nothing. Two out, Yankees five, Detroit nothing. Well, I'd tell you, that was a low knuckleball, and how he hit it that high and that far. You've got to be strong to do that. The 2 nothing pitch, high ball three, three and nothing. On deck, Yogi Berra. Dave Sisler is up once again in the Detroit bullpen. There's the fastball. Outside, is that four balls? It's ball four. Maris was standing up there. Roger was standing at the plate, and here comes Jimmy Dyke. That's the first walk given up by Frank Larry. And it looks like that'll be all for Frank Larry. As Jimmy Dykes comes out to the mound, takes the ball, and Larry leaves. Dykes pats him on the back. Larry in six and two-third innings. Gave up 11 base hits. He walked one, struck out three, and has allowed five runs. He had two wild pitches charged against him tonight. So Larry is out of there, and Sisler is coming on. And while Sisler is coming on from the bullpen, we'll pause for station identification. You are tuned to 1460 on the radio dial. This is your station for music, news, and sports. WOKO serving Albany, Schenectady, and Stro Troy. Time on the WOKO clock is 11 p.m. Ready to go. Yogi Bear is looking up there, showing us how his ankle is starting to swell up. He really hit himself on the foot. Fouled one right down off the ankle early in the ball game. Dave Sisler out on the mound is making his 12th appearance of the year. He's won four and lost two. He's pitched 19 and he's given up nine hits and seven runs. Ten base on balls, ten strikeouts. Given up one homer as a 3.5 earned run average. a great baseball family. Dad, George Sisler, Hall of Famer, one of the great left-hand hitters of all time. His brother Dick Sisler played with the Phillies, the Whiz Kids. In fact, it was Dick who hit the home run off Don Newcomb to win that ball game that put the Phillies in the pennant that year. Sisler will be facing Yogi Berra. Yogi bounced the first fly to center and single. Yogi has scored one run tonight. Roger Maris is at first base with two out. The Yankees lead 5-0. We're in the top of the seventh inning. Casey Stengel is calling Bill Scarlin back. The Moose has his left wrist taped, and as we told you, when he slid into second base, he hurt it. The pitch to Yogi is over, strike one call. And it looks like Scarin's going to be taken out so that he can go in and get some treatment on that wrist, and they'll probably put Kent Hadley in. The pitch is fouled again off Yogi's foot, almost the same spot. How do you like that? Yogi was showing us just before he came up to bat where he had hit himself on the leg. And now he just hits himself there again and it really hurts. And you know that usually happens when you hurt yourself in one spot. Invariably you hurt yourself in that same spot again and Yogi can hardly walk. 
He is standing there, and he can, can't put pressure on it, and the Yankee trainer is coming out, Joe Soares. And Yoga is leaning on his bat and pounding it in the ground, and you wouldn't think you could do it twice in one night. But Yogi has done it. Matter of fact, there are a lot of things people thought Yogi couldn't do. But he sure fooled everybody, I'll tell you that. And Yogi is in quite a bit of pain there. The trainer rubbing the leg, and he's lifting it up in the air. It looks like it hurts when he puts the weight of his body on that foot. And here comes Yog limping up to home plate. He has two strikes on him with two out, and Maris at first. The Yankees leading 5-0 in the top of the seventh. Boy, that's going to be a sore leg tomorrow. Yoga will have to go to bed with a wet dressing tonight. Throw to first, Maris bat. Here's the stretch by the right hand. Pitch to Yogi is fouled down the left field line. Tom Morgan loosening up down in the Detroit bullpen. Yogi walking around the batter's box. Now he gets set. Again the stretch. The pitch is hit back to the pitcher. Yogi going down to first base. The throw to first in time to get Yogi. And for the Yankees in the top of the seventh. Two runs on two hits. No Detroit errors and one man left. The score at the end of six and a half innings of play. New York five and Detroit nothing. Sometimes the way your car performs can be downright embarrassing, especially if, it, if it's been stalling frequently or idling rough or possibly doesn't have the get-up-and-go you're accustomed to. Well, now your trouble could be a dirty carburetor, a condition that can affect any car, old or new. Here's how. Exhaust fumes and minute particles of dirt can get by your air cleaner and build up deposits inside along the lower carburetor wall. Even a small amount of these deposits can cause the throttle plate to feed the wrong mixture of air and gasoline to your engine. And you get rough performance and actual gasoline waste. But a dirty carburetor is one embarrassment you can forget about if you use new Atlantic Imperial gasoline. You see, Atlantic Imperial actually goes to work cleaning out the deposits in your carburetor as you drive. What's more, it keeps your carburetor clean, puts more pleasure back into driving. So to end stalling, rough idling, and gasoline waste due to a dirty carburetor, use Atlantic Imperial, the gasoline that cleans your carburetor and keeps it clean. Now moving into the bottom of the seventh inning, the Yankees leading five to nothing. And here's Phil. We're limping around back there. As Al Kaline, who bounced the second and single left, steps in the batter's box. Whitey Ford out on the mound. We got action down the Yankee bullpen. Elston Howard loosening up. And Ryan Duran. Pitch to Kaline is a strike call. Howard loosening up quickly in the event that he might have to go in for Barry. Yogi's trying it to see if he can put weight on that ankle. Kneeling down, giving the sign. Best ball, low ball, one, one, and one. One, one pitch, change up, line to left field, serve coming on. He makes a beautiful shoestring catch on a sinking line drive by Al Kaline. Kaline went after a change of pace up around his eyes and really tomahawked it. Serve came charging in and caught that ball just about shoe high. A fine running play by Bob Serve. Took a base hit away from Kaline. Here's Rocky Colavito, who twice slide to serve in left field. Rocky 0 for 2. 
on deck, Lou Berberet. Here's Whitey's pitch to Calavito, hit right. Back to the pitcher, backhanded by Ford. Flips to Cadley, two away. Rocky went after a change-up curveball and hit it right off the end of his bat. Two out, here's Lou Berberet. I guess Rock doesn't know how to take all the booing and the write-ups that he's been getting here in Detroit after having two real great years with Cleveland. Trying a little too hard. Berber had reached on an error and hit into a double play. Whitey's pitch to Berber at his top foul outside of third. Cletus Boyer has got the room moving under it. And he makes the catch. Just in front of the box seat, and the Tigers get down one, two, three. For the third inning in a row against Whitey Ford. Nothing across the score at the end of seven full inning. The Yankees five and the Tigers nothing. A clean carburetor gives smoother driving performance. So use new Atlantic Imperial, the gasoline that cleans your carburetor and keeps it clean. The Yankees announced that mail orders for the 1960 All-Star Baseball game at Yankee Stadium on Wednesday afternoon, July 13th, will be accepted. Mail orders will be limited to four seats per order, should be postmarked on or before July 5th. All mail orders will be handled on a first-come, first-served basis. Each reserved seat ticket will cost $6.30, and a limited number of box seats at $8.40 are available for this first All-Star game at Yankee Stadium in 21 years. Prices include federal and New York City amusement taxes. Ticket orders must be accompanied by a certified check, banker's cashier check, United States money order, Western Union money order, or express money order, and made payable to the New York Yankees. 75 cents must be added to each total order for mailing and registering charges. Mail orders for All-Star tickets should be addressed to All-Star tickets, Gary Yankee Stadium, Bronx 51, New York. <laughs> Quickly on the scoreboard, Cleveland defeated Washington 5-4. Cubs lead Baltimore 3-2 at the end of 7. Rather, the White Sox lead Baltimore 3-2 at the end of 7. And Kansas City leads Boston 8-1 at the end of 4. Ken Hadley fouls one down the right field line, and that's the report over the uh, public address system that Bill Scowen jammed his left wrist, just as we told you, sliding in a second, and it will be x-rayed in the morning. That's just precautionary measures. The National League Pittsburgh beats St. Louis 3-2. Cincinnati leads the Dodgers 5-4 at the end of 7. The uh, White Sox, rather the Cubs, lead the Phillies 2-0 at the end of one of the second game. There's a drive to deep left center field. K-Line going back, way back, and makes the catch in deep left center field. Ball hit 400 feet. Ken Hadley up for his first time. The Moose was two for three while he was in there. Two singles and a fly ball at second base. Cletus Boyer, who is 0 for 3, bounced the third and bounced the short twice. He drove in a run with his second ground ball to shortstop. Dave Sisler on the mound. The pitch is hit on the ground. Fernandez can't heal it. He got in front of the ball as Joe tried to uh, take it off. And error charged to Fernandez. Chico got to the ball and it bounced off the heel of his glove. Here's Bobby Richardson. Bounced to short, singled, and fly to center. One away. Five nothing, the Yankees lead. Pitch for Bobby is taken low. Ball one. We're in the eighth inning. Pitch is fouled back against the screen. One and one. Tom 
Morgan and Pete Burnside loosening up in the bullpen. Clem Levine. No, is that Clem? That's Clem, number 23. Clem Levine is loosening up for Detroit. Richardson fouls a pitch at the plate. Pete Burnside, a left-hander, and Clem Levine. One of the great Dodger relief pitches. With Detroit now. One ball, two strikes on Richardson. One out. Boyer at first. Quick throw to first, but Boyer is back. Here's the stretch. There goes Boyer. The pitch is line a base hit right where Fernandez had been. Fernandez, the shortstop, broke over to second base. And Richardson lined a single right through short. The hit and run worked perfectly. First hit off Sisler. And it brings up the pitcher Whitey Ford, who bounced to first base twice in single. Whitey has scored once tonight. One away. Here's the stretch by Sisler. Pitch to Whitey is low outside, ball one. Here's the stretch. The pitch is fouled back out of play. One and one on Whitey. One out and two on. Right-hander looks back at Boyle leading on second. There they go. The runners are going. The ball is fouled back. One ball, two strikes. Whitey started to swing at that ball and held up and fouled it. Boyle could have missed the sign that time, but no damage done. Is strike three call. Whitey's out of there. First strike out for Sisler. Two away, and here's Tony Kubek. Tony is two for three. Single to right field twice. Bounce to first and sacrifice. Kubek is hit on the ground at second base. Bowling up with it over to Bilko for the out. For the Yankees in the top of the eighth, no runs, one hit, one Detroit error. Two men left to score at the end of seven and a half innings of play. New York, five Detroit, nothing. Bonjour, monsieur. You are Atlantic dealer, correct? Yes, sir. I'm an Atlantic dealer. May I help you? My machine, it has lost, how do you Americans say, ah, the thing. Thing? Oui. No more thing. Oh, oh, thing. Well, it could be your carburetor. Ah, le carburateur. Uh, yeah, probably a little dirty. We can fix that with Atlantic Imperial gasoline. Ah, très bien, monsieur. And Imperial, it makes many kilometers, oui? Oui, I mean, sure. Lots of mileage. Atlantic Imperial actually cleans your carburetor as you drive. And a clean carburetor cuts gasoline waste. You'd like to try it? We oui, hope it's it. Hope it's it. Laissez passer! Laissez passer! Ah, uh, such power, such pickup, such a clean carburetor. 
Vive la différence Vive Atlantic Imperial In the bottom of the eighth inning, Frank Bowling will lead off, and then Johnny Groth is on deck, ready to bat for Dave Sisler. And then Eddie Oates will be facing Whitey Ford. Gil McDougal, who is almost a forgotten man on the Yankees, is loosening up Whitey Ford out on the mound. And Elston Howard is coming out to take over for Yogi Berra. So Yogi's leg must be bothering him. And as I said before, this could be a winning night for the Yankees and still be a losing night if they should lose the services of Scarron and Berra for any length of time. The Moose hurt his left wrist sliding in the second and was taken out of the game. And Yogi fouled two pitches down off his right ankle. So Howard's catching. Yankees have served Mantle and Maris in the outfield. Boyer, Kubek, Richardson, and Hadley in the infield and Ford out on the mound. Holding hit into a double play fly to center. Hits the first pitch foul down the third base line. Strike one. Bridge Stadium in Detroit, Michigan. Beautiful ballpark. Everything is green as can be. Low curve popped in the air. Kubek, the shortstop, moving back in short left field, waving his arm, and makes the catch for the first out. One away, here's Johnny Groth. Pinch hitting for Dave Sisler. Groth is batting 222, two for nine. Nobody on. Five nothing. The Yankees lead. Bottom of the eighth. Johnny takes the curve low. Ball one. Fastball hit on the ground. Kubek, the shortstop, up with it. Throws to Hadley to away. Here's Eddie O's to bounce the third, walk, and hit back to the box. Hit to Eddie is inside, ball one. Chico Fernandez on deck. Pitch is over, strike call, one on one. One one pitch is over, strike two, one ball, two strikes. Ryan Duran is firing bullets down in the bullpen. Here's Whitey into the windup. Fastball hit on the ground at second base. Richardson to Hadley, and that's all for Yost and Detroit here in the bottom of the eighth. Nothing across the score at the end of eight full innings. The Yankees five and Detroit nothing. Let's see how many Whitey Ford has retired in a row. Three, six, nine, twelve. Thirteen. 14 men in a row. Whitey has set the last 14 men down. Take a look at the scoreboard. In the American League, Baltimore is tied up the White Sox. Three and three, playing the bottom of the eighth inning. Estrada has relieved Barber. Staley has relieved Pierce. Paul Jopo homered in the sixth with one. Cleveland beat Washington 5-4. Grant the winner, Ramos the loser. Dilbeck, Ramos, Batty, and Keene homered in that game. 
Kansas City leading the Red Sox 8-1 at the end of 5. Third of it against Daly. Ted Williams homing in the fourth with nobody on. The 502nd homer of his career. Jerry Lumpy had one in the first with one on for Kansas City. Pittsburgh beat St. Louis 3-2. Law the winner, Gibson the loser. Cincinnati leads Brooklyn. I mean the Dodgers 5-4 at the end of seven and a half. Sherry against Nuxhall. Locker, Roseboro, and Post homing in that game. The Phillies beat the Cubs in the first game 7-6. Farrell the winner, Harvey the loser. Banks had two homers, his 19th and 20th. Wallace had two for the Phillies and Herrera once. In the second game, it's the Cubs two, the Phillies one at the end of two. Freeman against Buzzard. Tom Morgan pitching to Bob Serve. The pitch is over for a called strike. Morgan takes over for Dave Sister. Old Plowboy Tom, one-time Yankee boy. Milwaukee defeated the Giants in the first of two. 9-6, Brunette the winner. Odell the loser. Here's the windup. The pitch is low ball, 1-1-1. One, one, one. Mays, Cepeda, and Long home it for the Giants, Crandall, Aaron, and Adcock home it for Milwaukee. In the second game, it's the Giants won Milwaukee nothing at the end of three and a half. Sanford against Pizarro. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. Low outside ball two, two and one. Five nothing, the Yankees lead. Top of the ninth inning. One pitch is fouled on the right field line. Two and two. On deck, Mickey Mantle. Mickey has home at his last two times at bat. He's also singled and struck out three for four. Pitch fouled off in the uh, right field seat. Two and two on third. Low outside ball three, three and two. Here's the payoff pitch. It's hit on the ground to the shortstop. Fernandez can't get it. It bounces right over his glove into center field for a base hit. Single for serve to center field. Hit number one off Morgan. Here's Mickey Mantle. We told you Mickey single struck out home and twice. He's driven in three runs. The stretch pitch to Mickey is foul back strike one. Boy, he had a good ripple at that one. is over. Strike two calls. Morgan making his 18th appearance of the year. He's won three and lost one. Curve outside. One ball, two strikes. Leading off first, the pitch low outside, ball two, two and two. Morgan sets. Pitch is lined right at the second base from one half over to short for one. Back to first. No double play. Bowling couldn't get the ball out of his glove. It was hit so hard, it must have buried way in there. Bowling had to feel that ball on the side, a one-hopper, and he couldn't dig it out of the webbing. So the fourth play from second to short. Roger Maris struck out, tripled, bounced to second and walked. Roger has scored once tonight.
The pitch to Maris foul over towards the Yankee dugout. Strike one. On deck, Elston Howard. He'll be batting in Yogi's place. Yogi fouled a couple of balls down off his right leg. Pitch low inside, one on one. the stretch. Pitch is lying to center field. A base hit boarded. He got that one. Kaline feels it one-handed and holds Mantle at second. Boy, I said it. They're hitting those low balls tonight, Maris and Mantle. That puts runners at first and second and the batter, Elston Howard. Clem Lebyan is loosening up down in the uh, Niger bullpen. Howard's batting 266, seven doubles, three triples, five homers, 26 runs batted in. All right, here's a stretch by Morgan. The curve is low outside, ball one. Harris on first, Mantle on second. Howard the batter. The Yankees leading 5-0 in the top of the ninth inning. Here's the stretch by Morgan. Pitches fouled on the right field line. And going back in the stands, out of play. One and one on Howard. Big lead off second base. Here's the stretch. Pitch is fouled on the third baseline, fielded by Frank Corsetti. One ball, two strikes. Morgan sets. Pitch low outside. Two and two. And Hadley on deck. Here's the stretch by Morgan. Curve is hitting the ground at second base. Bowling to Fernandez for one. Back to first. The throw is off. Still goes glove and rolling to the Yankee dugout. Mantle scores. Moving to second is Howard. Fernandez made a bad throw. That'll be an error for the shortstop. A fourth play from the second baseman to the shortstop. And Fernandez's bad throw allows Mantle to score from third. Third time Mickey has scored tonight. Maris is out and the Yankees now lead six to nothing. Here's Kent Hadley with Howard at second. That's no RBI for Howard, by the way. Pitch to Hadley is low ball one. Hadley, in his one appearance at the plate, fly to center field. Ted Williams has hit his second home run of the ball game in the sixth with one arm. That gives him 503. Man, is he starting to hit that ball. Boy, not too many sports writers thought he would hit even 500. He's going strong. There's a high foul. It's drifting back over the stands and out of play. Shooting those firecrackers off a little earlier tonight. You know, they have fireworks here after the night games. And they've been shooting them on and off. People in the stands. There goes another one. Well, they really have loud ones. I met the fellow in Chicago who handles the firework concession. 
He does in Chicago here out of ballpark. Has a curve hit foul down the right field line. One ball, two strikes, two out. Howard leading off second. Pitch is low, ball three. Checks the sign from Lou Berberet. Here's the stretch. Pitch is strike three called. He took a fastball down the middle. For the Yankees in the top of the ninth, one run on two hits, one Detroit error, one man left to score at the end of eight and a half innings of play. New York six, Detroit nothing. Now just about all of us are familiar with Atlantic's outdoor billboards. Beautiful color photographs of mountains, farms, lakes, and many other appealing scenes. And you're familiar, too, with the words, Atlantic keeps your car on the go. When you connect the words and pictures, you get the idea of just what Atlantic means. Quality products to meet your driving needs. Today's Atlantic Imperial gasoline, for example, now cleans your carburetor as you drive and keeps it clean. With Atlantic Imperial, you can enjoy smooth engine performance, greater gasoline economy. So use Atlantic Imperial gasoline to keep your car on the go. And we're on the go into the bottom of the ninth inning. Whitey Ford trying to prepare for his shutout. WOKO, Albany. The bottom of the ninth, now or never for Detroit. They've been shut out two games in a row. Detroit was shut out by Baltimore Sunday, one nothing and 2 nothing. They had a day off yesterday, and now they've been shut out for eight innings here against the Yankees. The Yankees lead 6 to nothing. Whitey Ford will be pitching to Chico Fernandez, Charlie Maxwell, and Steve Vilco here in the bottom of the ninth. Chico single, hop to second, bounce to short. Whitey's pitch is high outside, ball one. Up and the fastball is hit deep to left field. Fair moving back onto it now makes the catch. Fernandez got good wood on that ball but didn't get it up in the air enough. One away. Charlie Maxwell slides to left, hops to short, and bounces to second. a fastball over strike one call. Pitch is fouled back out of play. Strike two, nothing and two on Maxwell. Wind up the pitch as a curve, strike three. Marty Ford gets his first strikeout of the night. He's pitching tremendous ball, but yet that's his first strikeout. And Whitey has now retired 16 men in a row, the last 16 men he's faced. Steve Vilko takes the pitch right down the middle. Strike one call. Vilko single, bounce to short, bounce to third. Two out, Yankees lead 6 nothing. Pitch is top foul back out of play.
strike pitch. Inside, ball one, four, started to walk off the mound towards the dugout. Thought the pitch had part of the plate. Put a little extra on that fastball, too. All right, the wind up by Whitey. The fastball low outside, ball two, two and two. Ready now for the payoff pitch to Bilko. There it is, a fastball popped in the air to right field. Roger Maris moving back under it and makes the catch 40 out. As Whitey Ford retired the last 17 men that he faced. Nothing across for Detroit in the bottom of the ninth. The Yankees win the ball game. Six to nothing. And while we're getting the totals ready, how about joining... You know, a dirty carburetor can cause frequent stalling, rough idling, and actual gasoline waste. Don't let it happen. Use Atlantic Imperial, the gasoline that cleans your carburetor and keeps it clean. Now, Phil will be along with... The totals of tonight's ball game. Thank you. Six runs, 14 hits, one error, nine men left. For Detroit, no runs, four hits, two errors, and four men left. The winning pitcher is Whitey Ford, who has won three and lost five. It's his second shutout and breaks a non-winning streak for Ford since May 26. The losing pitcher is Frank Lowry, who's won six and lost seven. He's one and two against the Yankees, and now is 22-8 lifetime. This is... Well, as the Yankees win their fifth in a row, that winds up another Atlantic baseball broadcast. Tune in for more baseball listening tomorrow at uh, 9.10. Now, this is Bob Delaney saying that's all for now from P. Ballantyne and Sons, brewers of the crisp refresher, Ballantyne Beer, the largest selling beer in the East, and the Atlantic Refining Company and your Atlantic dealer who offer you Atlantic Imperial, the gasoline that cleans your carburetor and keeps it clean. Now, just a reminder that the broadcast brought to you through the cooperation of Sports Network is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Yankees solely for the entertainment of our listening audience. And any publication we broadcast or other use of the description and accounts of the game without the consent of the Yankees and the American League is prohibited. Final score again, the Yankees win.